do you think that with some of the new technology out there, again, we're learning so much, but do you see science maybe getting to a place where we can design these helmets, particularly for, for children, where if they are going to play football, we can displace that impact so it does not hurt the brain? Great question. Really the important question right now, because people are going to want to still play football. Yes. And so what's important to know is that CTE is fundamentally, it's an inflammation. It's your brain cells are inflamed, and then they eventually degenerate. And so what's important is to immediately detect concussions when they do happen so that players can be removed from the game. But unfortunately, it's been mostly guesswork until now. The FDA just approved um, an app that actually uses a tablet device on the sidelines to diagnose any kind of cognitive impairment. And if the performance goes down from pregame levels, you have some objective evidence now that there might be a concussion at hand. I do think that finally coaches, leagues are starting to address this issue. But I, I, I mean, it always amazes me if I'm watching a broadcast of a game and there'll be a tackle that's considered to be targeting, helmet to helmet. Mm -hmm. And the broadcaster will say, oh, back when I used to play, that was a great tackle. And then the other voice will say, yeah, but we're trying to get that out of the game. And I think this is a lot of people coming together because it's, it's if your kid's going to play, teaching them the right tackle technique, not to lead with the head, not to lead with the helmet. It's going to take technology, improved helmet technology. It's going to take, quite frankly, a lot of sports is driven by money, too. Caring, quite frankly, more about people's brains sometimes than, than the bottom line. And I don't mean to interrupt, but it was a fourth grader, 10-year-old boy. My son doesn't wear a helmet when he plays. And the rationale is that they're just trying to pull the flags off of each other. But, but it's brutal. I mean, I really got very nervous doing well, all the wait, research for this segment. A lot of like football leagues now, actually, they do wear some sort well, of... Well, that's... Yeah, uh, I, don't I was going to suggest... That and, and they don't wear... for his school, and none of the schools in his yeah, league are wearing helmets. Same thing with soccer. I mean, there's a lot of concussions associated From with youth soccer as well. I mean, I know it's not as sexy playing soccer with a helmet, but reality is let's let's But play. could technology, and again, you, this is years in the future, is there a way that we can make progress here beyond just saying, okay, no kids can, you know, kids, you're not going to play football. I have all the faith in technology to develop new ways of preventing this. The problem comes with CTE doesn't even show signs until 8 to 15 years after That's these the impacts problem. happen. Yeah. How long are we willing to wait to discover what works and what doesn't. Yeah, and the diagnosis is made at autopsy, correct? That's exactly right. Right now, there's no way to diagnose CTE while someone's still alive. And while neuroscientists are working on brain imaging um, to detect that, in some sense, it just might not matter because there's nothing we can do about it. And I don't expect a treatment for it anytime soon because, look, our bones heal and our, our, our skin cuts come back together and even our liver regenerates. But brain cells do not regenerate. Well, my son is with you. My son, Matt, the neurosurgeon, he played tackle football through high school. Never had head injuries, but he broke his shoulder and broke his ankle. That's a whole nother, nother story. But he said, Dad, my son will not play football. And yet he was, he was a believer. He loves football like, like you and I do. But well, and, you, and I will just throw out there that you can love your child like you loved Matt, and allow them to play football and teach them everything, and that is okay. It is a personal choice, and uh, yet I, I think you always need to make an advised choice with all the information, and I think you've provided a lot of that today. I and really appreciate the work you're doing. I can tell how that, passionate you are about and this. that's such a, a valid point. I didn't have all this information. You know, we're talking now almost, uh, well, over 15 years ago, so... A lot of this stuff is relatively new. We're only learning now more and more about number of concussions and CTE, exactly what it is, and the, the fact that playing football in an early age is so important. We didn't know that then. I'm glad my sport growing up was basketball. It, because when you look at the, the concussive sports, you know, you start to look at the ones where there's a lower concussion rate, and you're like, all right, well. You know, some of us dodged a bullet because we chose a sport where there's not a lot of repetitive head trauma. So I, I, I think this is something we all need to take to heart. We're going to have more information on CT on our website.